okay so this is the fitting stage in the pattern so what i have done i did baste my side seams and i stitched in regular length stitch my shoulder seams as you can tell that adjustment i made on the shoulders because i knew it was too long see how that hits perfect now that is hitting perfect in the perfect spot so that that was my little cheater method for making sure that this area fits nicely i can see as a side note playing with this pattern to make this um sleeveless because i think this dress will look really cute sleeveless but at any rate so we do have to add the sleeves i put on because this fabric I have discovered as I've been working with it is very sheer and so for the purpose of the video so you don't <laughs> see all, everything I put on a, a tank underneath so at any rate just be mindful of the type of fabric that you are using remember I said earlier in the video that in the sew long I would sew my side seams at a quarter of an inch to give me some room I did not do that because it would have given me too much room um it's it fits perfect now but if i had left it at a quarter inch i think the ease in this pattern is is a lot and i did find is more than what the pattern pieces say and i did find that with a different pattern i did do for connie crawford but at any rate i do like the way it fits here is the back you can see the lap zip is in um, I do like the fish eye darts did not have to worry about as you can tell doing a sway back adjustment that really helped um, at least for me so far as fit so I do like that it looks great um, the color blocking is cute and there is a piece down below um, I'll show you in the next clip because I did cut my overlay pieces off um, and the skirt front piece off incorrectly. I have this huge section on the side. I think I'm going to leave. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave because right now I have on a longer slip underneath this. I can either raise this slip up or just have a shorter slip on it's not showing a lot of leg is actually hitting at the knee but in the back there's it looks more like a a different type of high low hem and I think I'm gonna leave it like this we shall see once the dress is all done but I do like where this is fitting I like the fit around the waist as you can tell and I like the way it's fitting in the back so I will show you that one little piece and then we're going to move on to adding the facing. Okay, now that you have checked for fit adjustments, if you did not have to go back and make any changes, um, now you can move forward with sewing the facing to the neckline. You take your um, front neckline piece and your back neckline pieces, put those together, the matching notches, and then finish the outside edge, preferably couple things um, I would use bias binding on this uh, in normal circumstances but I do not have the bias binding so I am just surging around the edge but you if you do have bias binding I highly suggest doing that then you want to pin right side of the facing to the right side of the dress neckline and so once I have that all pinned together I will show you what that looks like Okay, now that you've gotten your facing pieces together and you've attached and sewn them to the bodice, you will clip down to one quarter of an inch and then do an understitch. And the understitch looks like this, if you can see that right here. And then you're gonna finish off the neckline piece. I will give everything a good press, just to lay every, make sure everything is laying, laying good, your point, you pivot it at the point so you can get a nice little V there. Um, go ahead and um, give it a good press and then you're going to turn this piece under. Now it says you can slip stitch this but I'm not and I'm just going to go along the same stitching line for this side and then for this side I'm going to put this raw edge underneath here. Let me show you what that looks like. So I just put that raw edge 
up underneath there. <clears throat> and then you can tack this down at the shoulder seams so it doesn't move or lift on both sides. And then you're gonna go ahead and sew the sleeves together. So with your sleeve, what you're gonna do is fold it right sides together and they actually want you to go ahead and um, put your gathering stitches up in, up here at the top um, because you're gonna ease the cap into the sleeve bodice pieces. But go ahead and sew here, um, 5 eighths of an inch here, and then you're going to um, fold the the bottom um, hem of the sleeves, you're gonna hem the sleeve, and then you're gonna attach it to your dress. And then from there, it's just hemming the dress. So what I will do is show you what the bottom of my dress looks like. I'm gonna let it hang overnight since everything is cut on the bias and allow it to drop a little bit. And then I will finish the hem and come in for the final part. Okay, so I'm coming back in, sleeves are in. This is what happens when you don't cut the pattern piece out. You have this much of a gap um, for the underlay. This was the overlay. So this technically should be coming down here and then kind of um, grating out on this end. I think I might have a solution. I may have just enough of this or I may have enough of this to attach. I was just gonna cut this off, but this is just, then it becomes way too short. Let's see what I come up with. Okay, so this is the final part and I am closing out um, with a kind of final thoughts, my review, so you can see some pictures that I was able to take. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. <sighs> I like the pattern. It's very easy to pull together, as you can tell if you've been following along on the sew along. Um, however, there are a few things that will make putting this piece together a whole lot easier. Now, you saw throughout the sew along some areas where I had to make some tweaks. Um, the one time I don't trace off a pattern and I messed up the pattern piece, which made a really big deal towards the end because I really didn't have that much by the way of um, leftover fabric scraps to, to really deal with. Um, but I will say it is a really, really easy sew. I, at least I think so. And I will begin to pop up some pictures here showing you um, as best I can. Um, amazingly enough, when um, I was ready to take pictures. It stormed here in Texas for like three days. It was dark and gloomy, could not really get any good pictures. So hopefully you'll see this. And then right when I was wrapping up taking the pictures, it started raining and the wind started blowing. So you'll see some of those uh, pictures too. But anyway, this is the final dress. You see it, um, you'll see it in the pictures. Um, I am, so far as construction overall, I am not 100% pleased. Um, I did not think a couple things through and I did mention those things as I was going through the sew along. One being um, using bias binding instead of um, surging. Um, surging is fine as well. And I may not have been as um, concerned about the look of the surging had I was using thread that match. And you all know I tend to match my threads, um, even in my serger to um, the color of my garments. Um, and also the bias binding where the uh, lap zip went in. Now, about this lap zip, I still don't like the look of it. It, it looks nice, I will say that. It looks nice, but I guess from an aesthetic point of view, I don't necessarily like a lap zip. And actually, I think an exposed um, zipper would look fantastic, especially if you use one with metal teeth. But then that will cause for a different type of fabric, perhaps. Um, and I also, um, now my fabric selection from uh, this Talio, um <clears throat> crepe is much lighter weight than this and so I will have to wear um, my actually I have it on today my Rebecca Page cami um, up underneath because you can see right through this no matter what kind of bra I had on I tried um, 
I do love, absolutely love the color blocking. The color blocking looks so, it's so pretty. The color blocking on this is so pretty. And you'll see at the bottom of the dress in the pictures, I fudged enough to kind of get the length back that I lost from cutting the piece incorrectly. And let me actually scoop back some so you can see. Um, and what I had to do because I didn't have continuous yardage, um, I do have, let me see if I can show you at the front there. If you can see, there's a little bit of a dip in the middle um, to kind of make that meet, but I did have to put some pieces together to make sure it lengthened. Now, yes, I could have just cut the skirt and made it all one length, but um, I looked at that and thought about that and that was too short <clears throat> and I think would have really kind of ruined the dress but that lap zip I do it, it is nice and at least in this situation it helped because my zipper doesn't necessarily match so I love the the um the dress because it really is it really is a easy so um I did not do a hook and eye um because I didn't think it was necessary the way I finished off the um let me see if i can get that to focus the way i finished off at the top there was no there wasn't a need <clears throat> for a hook and eye for me and perhaps if you finish it off the same way you don't need a hook and eye and i don't care for hook and eyes so um that did not um did not need to add that um let's see the fit, as you can tell, and again, you'll see in the pictures, me making the adjustment on the shoulders was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. I can, you can tell that, well, I can tell when I was looking at the pattern pieces that that shoulder would have easily dropped down. I took off, what, a little over an inch. That would have dropped easily down, on, down here on me. And so I'm happy that I was able to pull that up and let that um, those sleeves sit at the right point in my shoulder and again it was a cheater method um, but it works um one of the things i do um recommend too for this pattern it would be really nice is if you did piping say you did i could easily see this being done in like a chambray um or fabric that type um, that still have movement to it but still substantial and adding some piping um, in here in these different seams that I think would be so super cute however if you do decide to use a, a crepe or something like that some of the uh, fabric that was suggested on the back um, I would highly suggest French seaming because they're really just long seams even though they're curved they're really just long uh, seams and it will give a, a much 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 nicer finish on the inside of the garment um so overall i will wear it this is probably one i would wear to church more than likely um yeah i would probably wear this one to church more than likely um but i'm happy i did i did the project i'm happy i did the sew along definitely let me know your thoughts if you did the sew along how did it work out for you did you do French seams did you add piping or did you just go for it um, the way it is written out the gate um, tell me if the sew along helped you um, so I appreciate and thank you all so much for tuning in for the sew along again it's a beautiful sew and while I'm not a hundred percent excited about the end result it is nice enough where I can still wear it um, and like I said this will be a garment that I will be wearing to church so that is it that's the end of part three I want to come in with my final thoughts um, the instructions definitely um, as I think I may have mentioned very easy to follow nothing complicated um, in here at all but like I said from the very beginning measure 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 <laughs> um the connie crawford this is the second one had i went with my initial thought would only doing a quarter inch seam allowance because i thought oh um in, i'm going down a size less based on my measurements you know maybe i need to give myself some room if i did that this dress would have been swinging on me a little bit <laughs> um so measure 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 um 
And if you, if you want, do a muslin for it. This type of garment, when I'll just say, when I'm sewing garments like this, um, that is commercial, that has this much of a size range, sometimes I might do a muslin, sometimes I won't. It depends on the style lines, um, and how, uh, you know how I want to go about the project for this I can I can most certainly consider this a wearable muslin um, like I said there are some um, tweaks I would make and actually for this one I think it will be worth me repurchasing the pattern because uh, I really do like it but it was kind of hard to gauge and reassimilate the pieces in order to make that underlay piece that needs to go under the dress and I think I would just I think I just wouldn't mind having this pattern again. Um, so I'll have to look for another sale for Butterick. I got this back in 2018 for $1.99. Also, I'll, I can play with um, the pattern piece and figure out how much I actually, because I threw away all those pattern pieces I cut off, um, how much room I need to add to a pattern piece and just recreate that one little piece. That's probably much easier than rebuying the whole pattern again. Um, and now that I'm talking out loud, that is more than likely what I would do. Just remeasure the area and then go from there and redraft that pattern piece for the underlay and, and then I should be fine. Um, so yeah, this is a very nice dress, very nice fit, nice and flowy. So I am happy it is completed. So thank you everybody so much for tuning in. I am wearing today, this is the Cashmere Appleton dress, um, wrap dress, um, which I feel like I need more. I'll put it on today and I feel like I need more of these in my closet now. Um, so easy to put on. But anyway, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. You all have a fantastic rest of your week. And if you are watching, make sure you stay tuned for Sunday. Um, I'll put the date here on the uh, screen and that will be our Urban Tote Sew Along. Thank you everybody so much for tuning in and you all have a fantastic day. Bye.